Medina Health Equity ensures that every woman, regardless of the conditions in which they were born, grow, live, work, and play, regardless of their age, religion, level of education, income, or where they receive care, has access to high-quality respectful care before, during, and after pregnancy. To achieve this, the drivers of inequity that lead to disparities in maternal health care and outcomes need to be examined and understood. So at MDOC, we are very intentional around ensuring that we are meeting the needs and preferences of the women that we serve. We use that information and that knowledge to co-design solutions that actually meet their preferences. And at the center of this was our approach of using human-centered um, design. Uh, which was really about getting the inputs of different stakeholders, especially uh, women at the different levels, uh, into what we we're designing. There are proven strategies to address maternal health inequity. When the strategies are implemented, they bridge the disparity gap and ensure that every woman has access to high quality maternal health care. We were very intentional around ensuring that we are helping women to prioritize their health and their well-being, right, using our AI-enabled virtual health coaching through Complete Health Platform, which is really aimed at building the comprehensive, you know, physical, emotional, financial well-being of women, empowering them to make informed decisions about their health. I would say the other way we're doing this is through community engagement. We understand that um, a lot of women that are living in undeserved um, areas and do not have access to quality health and the community. So what we've done is creating awareness around maternal health education, danger size, and ensuring they're well prepared, you know, to go through their healthcare journey successfully. At MDOC, we are very strong believers in technology as an equalizer. And we are witnessing firsthand how AI-enabled coaching is providing knowledge and awareness and critical self-care support to the women that we serve. We are seeing women get really excited about their virtual health companion called Kem. So Kem is a 23-year-old health coach that loves Buka, loves to read. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is that Kem has been trained to act like a human health coach and provide that round-the-clock, holistic self-care support to the women that we serve. Kem speaks to them in pidgin and breaks down knowledge to language that they can really, really understand. We, however, understand that, you know, access to smartphone and data could be, you know, an issue for, for some of the women that we serve. And so we introduced an offline platform using USSD codes so that every woman with a smartphone or without a smartphone has that round the clock access to a virtual health coach, you know, helping them live healthier, happier lives. Postpartum hemorrhage is the leading cause of maternal mortality worldwide. Addressing the challenges that lead to postpartum hemorrhage can address inequalities in the quality of maternal health care and improve maternal health outcomes. I think what Smiles for Mothers really did for maternal health equity was making sure that um, women, regardless of wherever they are, have access to the best quality of care for preventing uh, postpartum hemorrhage, which was the area our program uh, focused on. And this then played out in things we did around policy updates. So we updated a few normative policies like the essential medicine list, um, the life-saving skills manual, uh, we also did some work on supply chain where we facilitated the introduction of heat stable capitocin, uh, which is a uterotonic, and that's a drug that's used to cause uterine contraction and reduce uh, bleeding during uh, delivery. We also did a lot of uh, work in training healthcare workers, uh, both uh, clinicians and pharmacists, uh, so that they could, of course, offer that ideal care uh, to the women. And uh, very, very importantly, we also did a lot of uh, knowledge uh, management, so generating evidence for the work we're doing, but even more importantly, uh, documenting it and sharing it so that it could be used in other uh, locations outside where we focused on. To arrive at a future when a woman dies giving life, 
It is important for policymakers to implement strategies that bridge the maternal health disparity gap and ensure that every woman has access to high quality maternal health care. So we think that policymakers should take proactive measures in addressing disparities that you know limits women's access to quality maternal health. They could do this by leveraging existing solutions like the you know the virtual self-care model using complete health platform or the digital review system. Um, they should also you know intentionally invest in digitization because digitization has the ability to scale and advance you know access to quality maternal health care. Uh, so I think it's never too early for policymakers to begin to solicit. Uh, inputs from the different stakeholders, especially uh, when we're talking about maternal health. Women's voices are very important uh, in defining whatever policies and then uh, implementing those policies thereafter, bearing in mind that no, not one size fits all. Uh, we need to be very flexible in the policies we design and the programs that come thereafter to take into cognizance the context uh, specifics of the different locations that we're implementing them. Deploying the strategies would ensure that all women have equitable access to high quality care and this would reduce the burden of maternal mortality. <laughs> <laughs>